Hello there, Criterion fans. It's time again to talk about the brand new Criterion Collection announcements for the month of December 2021. I have the announcement in front of me on my phone here, and I must say this is a very light month in terms of volume of announcements. We actually only have three titles being released in December from the Criterion Collection. December is typically a quiet month for Criterion. This is because November is the big month for sales and I imagine they sell a lot of discs during November. So that's why last month we got a ton of announcements for November and this month we only have those three which I am about to talk about now. Oh and for the regular viewers of my channel you might think this video looks a bit different or sounds a bit different. That's because I've changed the setup of this room. So I'm just testing out a few different things. So sorry if it's not up to the usual kind of level of production, I guess, that I do in my videos, but I'm just testing things out. So hopefully it's not too bad. I guess I will see when I actually come to edit this. So the first announcement coming December 7th, 2021 is One Night in Miami. This is directed by Regina King. And I, I love Regina King and her performances in so many things. She is, of course, in Poetic Justice, which is one of my favorite films of all time. I have not seen One Night in Miami, so shamefully I need to correct that. I've heard a lot of good things and I think it was in the running for a lot of awards earlier this year, so I really do need to remedy that. But with a new Criterion disc, perhaps that's the chance I need to actually give this film a go. Something that I've just thought of, is One Night in Miami the most recent film in the Criterion collection? I think this might be the only 2020 film in the collection so far. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I know films like Parasite and Uncut Gems are 2019 films. So yeah, that's very interesting if this is the newest film in the Criterion collection, but please do correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I forgot to say it's spy number 1106, and it appears to be stacked with some special features as we would expect. So I'm excited to check that out eventually and I'm very happy for the fans of this film because they're having it entered into the collection and that is always a nice feeling. The next film entering the Criterion Collection in December is The Learning Tree. Now this, I have to admit ashamedly, had never heard of before, but this is why Criterion are so great because they provide an education in many ways to a lot of us. So I'm very thankful to them for that. Uh, this is directed and also written, produced and composed by Gordon Parks. And it says in the blurb on the Criterion website that Gordon Parks was the first black American director to make a film in Hollywood. So this has me very intrigued and sounds like a very important piece of film indeed. It's spy number 1107. Again, it has a ton of special features, which I'm sure will provide some much needed context for me in terms of how this film, you know, got produced and made and just how important it is in general. So I can't wait to be educated by this release from Criterion. The third and final release from Criterion during December is The Red Shoes. Now, this is one I have seen and not only have I seen it, I've seen it countless times and it is one of my favourite films of all time. It is of course getting the 4K UHD treatment because it is already in the collection on DVD and Blu-ray. In terms of pricing it is consistent with what we've seen from last month's announcements so it is retailing at just under $50 for the 4K and Blu-ray combo pack. And like with Mulholland Drive and Citizen Kane, it appears that the 4K film is on its own 4K disc with no special features and all of the special features are on the Blu-ray inside the combo pack. Something I got asked a few times last month is why are Criterion not putting the special features on the 4K disc? I think this is for two reasons. 
Firstly, it's just simple for production. It means that they can just produce the 4K disc separately and then include it in the pack with the Blu-ray that they are already producing anyway. So it just makes sense, I imagine, financially in terms of their economies of scale, etc. So I think it makes business sense for them to do this. Also, it means that the 4K film itself is getting all of that breathing room to actually fit on the disc. It means that they don't have to compress the film down even more to try to fit the special features on as well as the film. So in my books, this is absolutely fine because when you think of the special features, they look amazing on Blu-ray anyway. You don't need to have them looking as good as the film necessarily. So I'm all for it. The one thing that is sort of disappointing following on from that discussion about special features is they're not bringing anything new to the table in terms of supplements. So it is exactly the same as what's on the existing Blu-ray in terms of these special features. And the Red Shoes came out on Blu-ray years and years ago now, and I'm sure there could be some extra juice for them to put on the disc. Personally, I feel like if they were just adding one or two extra special features into this 4K combo pack, it would get a lot more people interested in buying this new disc. Because if it's exactly the same as the old Blu-ray in terms of special features, a lot of people might not want to make the jump. But if there was some extra content on there, then that would get a lot more people interested. Now, there could be all sorts of business financial decisions why they wouldn't do that, which I'm not privy to. That's just something from a consumer point of view that I would love to see. I would just love to see these 4K re-releases get some extra content onto the discs. On a similar note, there also isn't much to distinguish the 4K release from the Blu-ray release in terms of artwork and presentation. I assume these 4K combo packs are going to be in some sort of thicker packaging, but the actual artwork on the front of the case is exactly the same as the Blu-ray we've had for years now. I just personally would have liked perhaps some different piece of artwork on here. Not that I don't like the cover already on the Red Shoes, just something different to differentiate it because I am going to be picking up this 4K set and it just means there's not really any reason for me to keep the old Blu-ray around after that. As for the film itself, it is one of my favourite films of all time. It's this beautiful tale of romance and music set to this backdrop of stunning technical cinematography. And it's just a great story of this young ballet dancer who wants to be this, this great dancer, one of the greatest of all time. And she has to choose between her love of her career and her craft and the love of this man who she has fallen for romantically. The central dynamic of this film is between the teacher and the student, and you can see the direct influence of this film on modern films such as Black Swan and Whiplash. So if you like those films, definitely check out The Red Shoes. So that is all I have to say about these Criterion announcements. It's a quiet month, but hopefully now when we see the announcements for 2022, I can't even believe that year is a real thing, but we are heading there. So it'll be very interesting to see what Criterion have in store next month for January's announcements. Thank you to everyone who has watched this video and all of my other videos. If you like this, please do subscribe to the channel because it helps me out. It lets me know that you're enjoying these videos. So yes, that would be a great help to me. Until next time, I hope you stay well and keep watching great films.